Recently, there have been special policies targeting Hong Kong people in mainland China. Personal accounts have been frozen under various pretenses, such as suspected illicit money. The threshold for withdrawing money has also been raised, taking up to a few days. When you go to the ATM to draw money, you must wait for at least an hour and get approval from the security guards before you can enter the bank to do the transaction. Radio Free Asia reported that in Shenzhen, Hong Kong people commonly bank with the Bank of China, China Construction Bank, and Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, or ICBC. There are usually a lot of people. The banks are guarded by several security guards with batons and shields nearby. At least 20 chairs are fixed inside the banks, and customers are required to stand in line and aren't allowed to enter uninvited. A notice outside a branch of the Bank of China said, wait time of at least four to five hours. I made an appointment to withdraw money a while ago. I know you made an appointment, but you still have to line up. That's the rule. The manager didn't tell me that yesterday. He said I could just come and get it once I've made an appointment. That's to prepare the funds. It doesn't give you a number to skip the line. I am here to transfer money. You have to line up for that too. What about taking out Hong Kong currency? For HK currency, if you need to take out cash, you also need to make an appointment. You make an appointment at whichever bank you want to go to. You must wait for at least two to three hours. The latest requirement of the Bank of China is that for withdrawals of more than RMB 200,000 yuan, that is roughly US 28,000, an appointment must be made at least one day in advance. The requirement varies from bank to bank and from branch to branch. In fact, for most withdrawals of more than RMB 20,000 yuan, that is about US $2,800, an appointment has to be made at the counter or by telephone. Even if they already know the day and place where they can withdraw money, they still have to wait in line for at least 4 to 5 hours. According to Chinese customs, the limit of RMB banknotes that can be taken out of the country is not more than 20,000 yuan. The same restriction applies to wire transfers. Therefore, in order to retrieve their savings in mainland banks, many Hong Kong people have to send their retired, elderly family members back to the mainland every day to withdraw RMB 20,000 yuan. They use the ant-moving strategy and have to wait in line for at least an hour each time. It's a time-consuming endeavor. What is even more absurd is that even if Hong Kong people make remittances or pay fees, their accounts can be suspected of problems, resulting in their accounts being frozen. A Hong Kong resident claimed he was targeted when his account became frozen after he sent 5,000 yuan to his mother in Guangdong province. Even his monthly mortgage, service charges, and utility bills, which were paid by AutoPay, were labeled as illicit funds for no apparent reason. He had to travel back to the mainland and spent several days complaining to a few branches before his account was unfrozen. Many Hong Kong entrepreneurs and investors can see that the investment environment in mainland China is deteriorating at an accelerated pace. In addition, Chinese officials are now trying out the direct purchase of Hong Kong stocks and renminbi in Hong Kong. The introduction of this series of policies seems to have given Hong Kong people the feeling that Hong Kong is accelerating its transformation into a mainland entity, and an increasing number of Hong Kong people want to move their deposits out of banks in mainland China. In order to stop Hong Kong people from withdrawing their money in droves, banks in mainland China have been introducing further measures to make it more difficult for Hong Kong people to take out their money. This, in turn, has heightened the panic among depositors. In recent years, the Hong Kong government has been encouraging Hong Kong people to invest in the Greater Bay Area in Guangdong Province, with the intention of bringing Hong Kong's capital back to the mainland. However, what Hong Kong people witness now is that they aren't allowed to take out their deposits. In fact, the people in mainland China are in a more difficult situation. In recent years, news concerning China's major banks such as difficulties withdrawing money, frozen bank accounts, and difficulties repaying loans early have become frequent hot searches on China's web. If I make an appointment today, can I get about 300,000 yuan or 40,000 US dollars tomorrow? Make an appointment today? Yes, I'll make an appointment today. I should be able to take out 300,000 yuan tomorrow from such a big bank.
You need to make an appointment before 3 p.m. I'm making an appointment now. Can I get 300,000 yuan tomorrow? I can only give you an appointment tomorrow. With the appointment made tomorrow, we have to look at it again next Monday. Why can't I make an appointment today? You can make an appointment after 3.30 p.m. Why can't I make an appointment today? Leader, why can't I make an appointment today? There is a time for this. You can't film me. We are conducting normal business procedures. This is my legitimate right. I can deposit money at any time, but I need to wait a few days to withdraw it. Why? This is a large amount of money. Your manager said that I can't get the money until next Monday. Why is that? 300,000 yuan. The bank doesn't have it? If I don't delete the video, will you not let me transfer the money? I can let you transfer money. I am willing to pay 50 yuan to transfer money from your bank to my account at another bank. I need money very, very urgently. I can let you transfer money, but your operation is out of time. This is caused by you, right? You re-enter the information again. You were just torturing me, right? The bank is supposed to serve the depositors. How can it be like this? You can't film us. It's violating our portrait rights. I deposited money here, and now I want to take some money out. Why can't I get the money out? It's not that you can't get it out. It's at the subsequent stage of the operation, and we have someone to help you deal with this matter. How long will it take to get the cash out? I'm letting manager Huang help you. Wait for him to call you. I have been waiting here for two hours. How come it has not been dealt with for two hours? I'll let the manager call you right back, okay? I came to the bank counter to withdraw money. You're working here. I haven't been able to withdraw any money in two hours. How long do I have to wait before I get my money? I already know your situation. We have been processing it. Now manager Huang will contact you. He will call you to let you know the progress. You need to tell me how much longer it'll take to get my money out. I'll let the manager contact you now. Why is it such a hassle to get money out of your bank? I'm only taking out a few thousand yuan or several hundred US dollars. You have to tell me what the reason is, and you won't. It's getting harder and harder to open a new account at the bank. In the last couple of days, there has been news from the banks in Beijing that they have set a limit on the number of transactions that could be made on one type of account. That is, the limit is 5,000 yuan or US $700 per day for all transactions not conducted over the counter, including online banking, mobile banking, online quick payment, POS terminals, ATMs, and third-party payments such as Alipay, WeChat Pay, and so on. After I heard the news, my first reaction was that it was over. In the future, even buying a cell phone must be paid in installments, according to this process. Buying a car is even more screwed up. Don't do anything for a day, but just make money transfers. It might take 70 or 80 transfers till your hands get cramps. All of this suggests that China's economy is on the brink of disaster, so it isn't just one bank that's in trouble, but the banking system is failing as a whole. Village banks in Henan and Anhui broke out in April 2022, and nearly 400,000 depositors were unable to retrieve their deposits, triggering several rounds of large-scale protests. A year later, the victims still can't get their deposits back. On July 2nd, many depositors came to Kaifeng City in Henan province to continue to protest for their rights. Henan Bank returned my deposit. Henan Government returned my deposit. <laughs> oh, 
A woman cried to pedestrians in despair that being unable to withdraw the deposits has led to the death of an elderly member of the family who was heartbroken, and her child had to go out to work because there was no money for him to continue the schooling. The family hasn't been able to get their hard-earned money back so far. In addition to village banks, state-owned banks in China have also frequently reported the disappearance of customers' deposits. In May 2023, the media reported that customers' deposits had disappeared from ICBC, the Construction Bank of China, and the Agricultural Bank of China. For example, a businessman from Changsha, the capital city of Hunan province, lost 400 million yuan or 56 million US dollars in the Hunan branch of the Construction Bank. In order to retrieve his money for several years, this businessman spent a lot of time every day collecting evidence and studying various bank materials, flow sheets, accounting opening information, and so on. The bank information he had collected over time showed more and more problems, which led him to believe that what he encountered was connected with negligence in the bank's internal management and suspected economic crime. The disappearance of deposits by several depositors has also occurred in a branch of the ICBC in the capital city of Hebei province. One female business owner had only $18 left in her deposit of about US $1.59 million, and a woman in Shandong province deposited US $140,000 in a local rural commercial bank with only 14 US cents left after five years. In 2022, over U.S. 35 million in deposits from 28 depositors at the Nanning branch of the ICBC also vanished. And nearly U.S. 42 million in certificates of deposit from Siddiq Bank have mysteriously evaporated. Many victims of the crash of the village banks told the public that they chose those banks because they thought higher interest rates were offered. Yes, in China, people don't have much choice. With economic growth slowing, prices rising, and spending power diminishing, Chinese banks have been lowering their interest rates on deposits. It has prompted people to travel long distances across town to deposit money for the sake of better interest rates. They are known by netizens as making deposits in special soldier style. These people ride the high-speed trains to deposit money in other places. They don't have time during the week, so they do it on weekends and return on the same day. That's what's entailed in so-called special soldier-style deposits. Chinese media reported in mid-June that cross-city deposits are a form of self-help for depositors who want to get higher deposit rates in the face of declining interest rates on bank deposits. On June 8, 2023, China's six largest state-owned banks collectively lowered their term deposit interest rates, ending the era of 3% interest rates. On June 12, 12 national joint stock banks, including China Merchants Bank, Shanghai Pudong Development Bank, and China Everbright Bank also announced that they would cut part of their deposit interest rates effective that day. After the adjustment, the annualized interest rate for deposits is 0.2%, and the maximum annualized interest rate for a 5-year fixed term is 2.8%. The listed annualized interest rate for five-year term deposits is 2.5% for the six major state-owned banks. It means that the interest rate for term deposits has shrunk. In line with past practice, small and medium-sized banks such as joint stock banks will see another wave of downward adjustments in the future. Under these circumstances, choosing a bank in a different city to get a higher interest rate has become a desperate move for the extremely risk-averse savers. China's media, Economic Observer, reported that Miss Hai, who lives in Shaoxing, Zhejiang province, is a young lady born in 1995. At 5 a.m. on June 3rd, she was awakened by an alarm and rushed to Shanghai on the high-speed train to make a deposit. She arrived on time at 8.30 a.m. in Shanghai and then took half an hour on the subway to the bank. By the time she arrived, it was nearly 9.30 a.m. and the bank was crowded with depositors waiting to do business. While waiting, she communicated with people around her and found that several were cross-city depositors like herself. The report says, As a post-95, Ms. High is now considered a small expert in being frugal and saving money in her close circle of friends. In her words, in the circle of making money, being frugal, saving money, making deposits in the style of an ant moving has become a daily habit for her. Her biggest reason for this change of attitude towards money was the mass layoffs in the summer of 2021 due to the company's poor operation. 
After being laid off for a little over half a year, she suddenly realized that she couldn't survive for a month without working. She was unemployed for four months. Two months after being laid off, she had to ask her parents for money to live on, even though she had scrimped and lived frugally. It was at that moment that she realized that she needed to have savings in hand to better cope with the unknown future. She said the idea of Crosstown Deposits came to her some time ago when she exchanged ideas with her buddies. After doing some math, after subtracting the transportation cost of the high-speed train and the subway, there was still extra to be gained, making the trip worthwhile. Will saving money become addictive? Ms. High has no hesitation in saying yes to it. She said, Especially when you see the savings going up, little by little you feel a sense of achievement. Some of my classmates and relatives have begun to seek advice from me on ways to save and deposit money. For example, last weekend my cousin also played a round of special soldiers at my suggestion. He drove to Shanghai specifically to deposit a five-year term deposit. Then, large banks dropped their deposit rates again yesterday, unexpectedly, and my cousin sent me a special message to thank me. Another report describes a woman who was born in the 1990s and works for a private company. In order to put her money in a bank that offers a higher interest rate, she and her friend drove to Shanghai from Taizhou, Jiangsu Province. They arrived at the bank at 9 a.m. on May 13, 2023. Many people were waiting in line, with most being young people from out of town. The lady found that there was a considerable difference in the interest rates for term deposits offered by the same bank in different cities. She calculated that if she deposited RMB 200,000 for three years at a rate of 3.5%, she would get more than RMB 2,000 or US $280 more in interest each year. If she deposited 500,000 yuan, she would get 6,000 yuan more interest per year. The report also describes the experience of a 27-year-old man who became an expert for making deposits. On April 1, 2023, when his wealth product in a large sum was about to mature, he took a high-speed train from Suzhou to Shanghai on Sunday, April 2, to make a deposit. However, this young man found out that the interest rate of the term deposit he put into the Pudong Development Bank has been going down. The interest rate of 3.5% in April 2022 dropped to 3.35% in September, and then by November it stood at 3.25%. The fact that some people have opted for cross-city deposits in pursuit of higher interest rates has prompted many netizens to lament. They wrote, How can the financial industry be so viciously competitive, with the same banks in different regions offering different interest rates? What's with the interest rate? Is it safe? Can it be taken out once it's been deposited? We can't blame those who act like special forces in depositing their savings. These people know that their savings would lose purchasing power due to the depreciation of the RMB, but they have no other options. The current economic environment has made Chinese people uneasy and unsure of their future. Because of the massive crash of peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms in China in recent years, Chinese don't dare to put their money in such fraudulent platforms. Nor do they dare to buy financial products from banks or invest their money in the stock market, which has been plummeting all the time. They just want to save some money with a little bit of steady interest. However, are these deposits really safe?